Another welcome to Prime Sports with me, Razak Musbao. And let's start off with the Ghana female, national female football team, the Black Queens, who secured a 1-0 victory over the Taranga Lioners of Senegal. It was a second of the doubleheader friendly for the Black Queens as part of preparation for the Wafu Zonbi tournament and the African Cup of Nations qualifier. A defender before the set piece is taken and Russian Vicentia shows that she needs to ensure sanity and the 18 yard box before the corner kick is taken. And that is how Russian Vicentia is having a word with Justice Trinavoa. I can. Kamal Hassan to Suzy Dedete. As five, and we finally get a goal in this game. And who else would be on target for you? The calf. Best player. But uh, it makes it 4-0 on aggregate for the Black Queens. On Saturday, they faced uh, the Senegalese and they won by three goals to zero. Then today, the second of that doubleheader friendly came off and they won one goal to zero. Nora Hapto's side clearly are looking ready for the Wafu Zumbi tournament and the African Cup of Nations qualifier. Now, uh, my colleague, Akosia AJ of GTV, uh, monitor the game, has been monitoring the game, and she joins me on Zoom to... Uh, help us understand what exactly has happened at the camp of the Black Queens and what this performance means as far as the team's readiness for the upcoming competitions are concerned. Of course, yeah, thank you very much for joining me on Prime Sports. And uh, let's start off the game today. On Saturday, we saw the team's performance very impressive. Today, although we did not see a number of goals scored, but on aggregate, that's four goals scored, zero conceded. What is your assessment of the team's performance? Hello. All right, so we will just uh, reconnect to Akosia AJ. And you can see on your screens, that was a goal that was scored at the lone goal for the Black Queens earlier today at the Accra Sports Stadium. And uh, it definitely uh, puts into perspective the preparation that is being done on the Black Queens to get them uh, back on track as far as their performance on the African stage and the world stage is concerned, or it's the ultimate dream of qualifying the Black Queens to the World Cup and possibly clenching the African Cup of Nations call of, uh, uh, trophy, which appear to have eluded the Black Queens for a very long time. Nora Haptel has been uh, the one in charge of the side. She's been, been uh, at the hems of affairs for some two, uh, four to five months now, and she's been putting the team together, hoping that the Black Queens can shine again and make Ghana proud once more. Let's uh, check on Akosia AJ now. Akosia, if you can hear me, I was asking your assessment of the team's performance uh, coming uh, back on the game on Saturday and the game today. All right, we'll come back to that story. Of course, you appear to be having some uh, issues there, but we'll come back to the story. But the Women's World Cup is just 100 days away and organizers of the tournament say some are 650,000 tickets have already been sold for the event in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, the World Cup, which features England and the Republic of Ireland, start on the 20th of July with the final on the 20th of August, as well as targeting 1.5 million ticket sales. Organizers predict the month-long tournament will attract a global television audience of 2 billion viewers. Uh, FIFA hope more than 100,000 fans will attend the event opening day overall when New Zealand play 1995 winners Norway at the 50,000 capacity Eden Park in Auckland and Australia face the Republic of Ireland at the 83,500 capacity stadium Australia in Sydney. Australia opening match was originally due to be played at Sydney Football Stadium, which holds 45,500 people, but has been moved to a bigger venue to meet the demand for tickets. The last phase of ticket sales has just started for what promises 
to be another big milestone in women's football. Let's uh, get back to the story relative to the Black Queens and Akosia J joins me. Akosia, if you can hear me, I was asking for your thoughts on uh, the Black Queens game on Saturday and today. What is your assessment of the team's performance so far? Um, Jose, if you can hear me, we are, we are struggling to hear you clearly. If you could just reposition yourself a little so we could hear you a bit more uh, clearly. All right, we will come back. Uh, we'll get back to Akosia when we get uh, uh, it, uh, the, the connection pretty clearly there. But let's get to the Champions League now. And in the game between Manchester City and Bayern Munich, it's currently three goals to zero in favour of Manchester City. Uh, Bernardo Silva on target, likewise. Erlen Haaland also on target there. And in the other game between Inter Milan and Benfica, we'll bring you up to speed on that. But it is... And uh, let's get back to the Black Queens now. And of course, Jay joins me via phone. Now, of course, yeah, thank you very much for, you know, staying on with us. I mean, just uh, on Nora Haptos, you know, uh, guidance that he's, she's providing for the team. We saw the Black Queens play against Senegal on Saturday. It was a relatively impressive performance, win three goals to zero. Today, they didn't get a number of goals. One goal to zero, it ended. But on aggregate, that's four goals scored and zero conceded against a very tough opposition, in, in this case, Senegal. What, what has been your assessment of the team with reference to these two games? I think it's been a good exercise for Coach Nora. Remember that this is her second um, international match that she's had the opportunity to lead. She had the opportunity to play them um, when they went to Togo Kotonu to play some games there before playing the home game. Very important for her. But then we're not expecting anything less from her because she had the opportunity to invite a lot of foreign-based players to use in an international friendly, which was quite surprising because when the Black Queens are playing a match that is not as competitive, you really don't get a lot of the foreign-based players coming down here to play. And you remember that on Saturday, even though they scored three goals, there was one particular goal that was scored by Grace Asantua, which really went viral. Everybody talking about the composer and everything, she had to have scored that particular goal going via for everybody to talk about. So she had the likes of Grace Asantua, she had um, Evelyn Deju, she had Azuma Bogri, um, Janet Deju, formerly of Hazakis ladies, who now implies her trade in Israel. She had Koshia Boachi, who is now the captain of her team, after um, Papali uh, decided that she uh, wouldn't be playing for the national team anymore. The captain is now called on Koshia Boachi. Um, she has had a good number of games. But then you realize that the, how they played on Saturday was absolutely different from how they played today. Because in today, he made a number of changes. We didn't see Azuma Bugri, who usually put a midfield in the game um, earlier on in the game today. And we saw how our team suffered a bit in the first half, where we were not able to um, be as sharp as we were when we played on Saturday. In the, um, the second game we played on Today at 4 p.m., uh, we had the likes of Princess Ogusu of Pablo City who had the opportunity to start the game. We had a number of our local players starting in this game, and it was a bit difficult for them to come together and be able to put up the same um, quality as they did in the first game. And so for me, I look at this game and I say, well, it's, yeah, she's building a new team. It's important that we don't judge her based or maybe what she was able to do in her first game. Because in her first game, she used almost 90% of local players, of international based players to start. And we know of these players because they played in some big tournaments where their names are household names and we spend nothing less from them. Then in today, we see how she was able to use the local base players and see the differences and all the weaknesses that they bring in the team to be able to build on it. Remember that she's rebuilding this team. And I was particularly impressed about the fact that she decided to change the face of the team that played on Saturday so that she would be able to fully assess the new ones that she brought in. 
because sometimes you know that it's quite unfair that you invite players to camp, they train for almost two weeks, three weeks over a month, and they still don't have the opportunity to play when it's time for the main action. This time she's given everybody an opportunity to play and she would be able to access to the fact that, well, when I gave you the opportunity, such and such and such were the things you were able to do. You look at Coach Nora and you realize that she likes to start a lot from um, the back. But for a coach who likes to start a lot from the back, I think sometimes I find this um, very questionable with some of the decisions her goalkeepers um, do because when they have the opportunity to start a counter, they tend to delay a lot. And this is a, 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 a coach who would like to start from the back. And when they don't start, and they delay play. You ask yourself, why are they doing that? And you have some players who tend to hold on to the ball too much and when they meet, sometimes make the playing very easy and very simple so that you could have the best of composure to be able to um, execute what you have to do, especially when you are in the final set. And so they we didn't see much of that. And Interesting. even in her press, she was telling us, well, she changed the face of her team to mm. be able to access the players. Mm. And so for me, I look at this as a, a, a rebuilding process. A, a good test. In the third game, they did very, 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 very well. Yeah, in I mean, scoring... Game, she changed the face of the team to know that on her bench, when she needs to bring in people who she can rely on. And also, we should also know that the FA has done so well for her. So that's why they've, they, they've made the environment so good for her. You can see they were even in the black sand park when they were coming to play. Formerly, they wouldn't have been. They would have been in the coastal bar. They were in the black sand park, which means they were very comfortable. They've been comfortable in camp. And they had on their new jerseys. Remember when they played in Kotonou? They had on their old jerseys. And we all talked about it, why they had to wear their old jerseys. Yep, yep. They had their new jerseys on. And even at the end of the game, the mm. FA president announced them that they could keep the jerseys. That's not something we can hear a lot when it comes to the black things. You play, you keep the, they keep the jersey. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. So, uh, so, 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 I was saying, so in terms of support from the GFA, we are seeing it, uh, you know, relatively improve in terms of the conditions under which the Black Queens are now training and even camping. It does appear that there's massive improvement. Exactly. I mean, massive, you're talking about a team. Yeah, just, just, just a final question. You're talking about a team that was the first to qualify the country to the World Cup, you know, way back in the 90s, even before the Black Stars made it to the World Cup. So I'm just trying to get to understand, even for the benefit of our deep viewers, over the years, you know, based on your assessment, what has been the problem, the major challenge with the Black Queens? For which reason, you know, this project of, you know, a, a voter, this voter project that Nora Haptel appeared to be uh, spearheading was introduced. What, what, what has been the major challenge with the Black Queens? For which reason we are seeing this, uh, you know, relentless efforts to try and rebuild the team? So over the years, we failed to learn. Over the years, we were okay with the fact that we were the first team to qualify to the uh, World Cup, even when the Black Stars had not even thought of going there. We absolutely just failed to learn when the others um, we thought we were teaching to play were still learning. We thought we could just rely on the same old things we were doing to be able to qualify. And that is something that really, really hurt us. Because over the years, look at some of the coaches that that um, had to come and take charge of the team. And then you look at how they were playing, using the team, how they would play, you'd realize that there was something fundamentally wrong with how we were playing. And it was simple. We were not getting used to the new style of play. We were not understanding where women's football was going to. We were not understanding the system of play that we needed, even as Ghana, to understand where we are, understand who we are, understand the kind of players we have, and what we needed to do. And the issues were just too plenty. You would have so many off-the-pitch issues which would affect play. Remember that every time the Black Queens played, every time they qualified for a tournament, from when they won gold in all African games some years ago, it was, we need our money, our money has not been paid. So every time, a whole lot of um, behind-the-scenes issues were yeah. affecting the players on how they play. So mm. we, one, we fail to learn, and two, we always make the politics around the game affect the 90 minutes that the players have to deliver on the pitch. And so that, those are some of the things that really affect us. And from what we are seeing now, if we're going to be able to keep it, it looks as if we are on a certain right path. See, to make everything clear to us, today, Nigeria played against New Zealand. We also played against um, Senegal. But the only difference is we're just playing an international friendly to build a new team. 
And Nigeria are playing an international friendly to what? To go for the next World Cup, which is in um, Australia yeah. in June, July. So if that puts anything in perspective for us, what we are just playing to now build a team, Nigeria have learned so much, they build their team so much that mm. they are playing in, color, in, in friendly to yeah. build themselves up for the next World Cup. I was thank you very much. We appreciate your time on Prime Sports. That is Akosia J. She works You're with uh, GBC and uh, an ardent follower of the women's game in the country, which is picking up steadily. And away from that, Jurgen Club has apologized to Liverpool fans uh, as they approach the end of a challenging season, saying he is 100% responsible for the slump that the team has uh, you know, uh, encountered. And after coming close to completing the quadruple last season, Liverpool have experienced a dramatic regression and currently lie eighth in the Premier League, 29 points behind league leaders. He's been speaking to Sky Sports. And that's where we draw the curtains on tonight's edition of Prime Sports. With me, Razak Musbao. Do have a lovely evening. Sports segments was brought to you by... Mendes DBS Industries to you. Let's go to DBS Industries.